due to time needed to finish the pelican we're going to be doing in class Friday, we're going to be doing something different with the feathers than what you see in the painting that I've done here. And I would have re-recorded the project six days ago, but I got sick. I'm still sick. And I will do my best to explain what we're doing when we get to the feathers um, when we get there. But uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. I asked you guys what you wanted your last watercolor painting to do and two people requested a pelican so being one of my absolute favorite birds <laughs> um i took on the challenge i've never painted a pelican before so i will tell you that it's really fun there are hundreds of different looking pelicans i'll bring some samples to class friday um and i actually pieced together one that's poster size it's probably bigger than life size so you guys can see the details so what i got caught up in in painting this guy is the details so um if you pay less attention to the details um and just really kind of do enough to tell the eye what's going on you'll have plenty of time to um paint your guy um, what I'm doing here is pretty soon I'm going to show you not only the drawing, the, the drawing that I'm said to you, I'm going to show you the pelican that I drew from, but also the pelican whose colors I like more. Um, you get to choose whatever colors you like. This guy is that I'm painting is a brown pelican. So, um, and the light, the sun is coming from his back the back of his head so when the when you see the painting yeah keep spinning it when you see the painting um in the direction it's supposed to be the light is coming from the right so um right now i'm painting the highlights um of the back of his head and this part of the pelican is a really cool furry kind of a furry feather teeny teeny tiny feathers um so i attempted the highlights of the feathers i'm going ahead and putting those in first and then brown is going to go in this section. Now, what I was not able to accomplish was a dark enough brown. And to be honest, I'm not sure why. Um, I, you will see that I keep adding layers to the brown. I just can't get that line right there. It needs to be really dark and crisp to give it the contrast that it needs. So, um... I started too light. You can see how light this color is and by now you probably know that watercolors dry a whole lot lighter than, than what you see. Not all of them, um, but this brown sure did. So um, I will continue to darken up <laughs> the guy's neck <laughs> um, to bring in some contrast. So um, hopefully I won't talk too much. but. I will just explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, but you guys can pick whatever colors you want. If you want to make a green, blue, and orange pelican, go for it. Just, um, you know, we'll be using the same drawing. Um, if you have another drawing of a pelican you want to do, by all means, you can do that too. Very last minute though, to <laughs> try and come up with a sketch. Here's the drawing of the guy I got my drawing from. Um, but I've altered him a little bit. So I'm actually following the feathers of this guy. But what happens is later on, I confuse the two. And I start drawing the feathers of the brown pelican with this gray-white pelican. And um, oh, you'll see. So what we're going to do when we get to the feathers on the body is not so much detail as what you'll see me do. Um, you could just fill it in and then add some some smaller feathers, uh, feather strokes, just to show the directions of their feathers. Because usually their feathers are laying down nice and neat. Um, and I managed to make his wing very complicated and tangly looking. <laughs> but um, I still like him. So right now I'm just trying to m communicate that the neck feathers are more fuzzy and soft than the head feathers. I just think it's so funny how their hair sticks up. Um, and now I'm adding a warm brown for the side that the sun is on, keeping this, the side that's to his beak 
and that bag under his beak. Um, trying to keep that a cool color because it's in the shadow. And you can see already that the neck has faded out. It's just a funky color, so we won't be using that color. Actually, I'm going to have all the colors available um, tomorrow. So remember how I said, if you want to take some of the colors home, bring your own um, palette, um, unless we can, maybe we can on the, you know what, you could, if you'd like to commit to bringing it back, you could sign out. Um, I, I noticed that there isn't going to be a painting class next semester, so you could sign out a palette and bring it back. Um, if you don't bring it back, the school will, will most likely bill you for it. <laughs> um, but I could put paint in each of the little compartments and you could paint at home because you your money, well, the school's money, but your money paid for the supplies. Um, I need you to bring back the orange, little tiny orange brush. Just go ahead and bring it back, leave it with me. That one's my brush, the one I'm using right now. Um, but the four brushes in the set, those are yours. Um, what, what else do I, the pencils and erasers are mine. Is that right? I'll look that up. I still have a headache, so I'm not going to commit to anything I'm saying right now. <sighs> I added too much paint, so I'm pulling it off again because you want the center where it's lighter to, um, it's the highlight area. So you want uh, to create a roundedness or any kind of dimension. You want to have it darker on the edges and lighter on the part that you want highlighted. Like his head, his head's turning out pretty nice because that's the highlighted part um, from where the sun is kind of hitting him. Pelican's beaks are very interesting. Uh, if you don't want to do that bag part, I'm sure I have a picture where um, that neck isn't showing so much because this part where the yellow is and where I'm about to add some hot pink um is super liney the the detail on this is amazing i mean these guys they make their mouths open huge and they can pull in and hold like huge fish in there so all these little lines just represent the kind of accordionness of um i wish i knew the name of the the bag uh that's what that's representing so i got a little taken into the detail of that um, in making all these lines but I wanted to communicate that that's that's what was going on there pelican's eyes can also be pretty piercing have you ever had a pelican look straight at you Oh my gosh, today I had Facebook remind me of a time I followed a pelican and recorded him, and then I have a picture of him staring at me. And it's really cute because they're staring at you and their little eyes, even though they're on the side of their head, they're looking straight at you. And you just know, don't mess with me. Because <laughs> um, their little hooky beaks, yeah, they're not the softest thing you want to encounter. So what I've done is I'd, I put a layer of water down, then I'm going to add more paint to the edge so that the line is a little more crisp so it doesn't blend into what's next to it, just to keep those pieces separated. So the yellow and pink parts are the bag, 
and the blue part is his beak, I'm going to call it. I should look up the parts of the pelican. In that middle section, I intended to um, keep lighter, but you'll see I didn't manage to do that. <sighs> I want to say I'm happy with how everything in this section turned out what you see here it's his body with the feathers I've never painted a bird before so I'm um, I am NOT I will admit I am NOT knowledgeable on how to paint feathers and I would have repainted <coughs> mm -hmm. excuse me <coughs> I can't even re-record that sorry you guys I just don't have the energy but um really I'm sorry um so uh, I would have repainted this but I didn't have the time for one thing and then I got sick so um, I'm just adding a brighter yellow here just to pump that color up a little bit and also because I love the effect that putting um, color on a wash I love that speckly kind of look um, I realized it was too dark and so I'm removing some of it right now <laughs> but I still have the brighter lemon color on there that I really am happy with that and if you can see the brown of the neck it's faded right out again and I just don't know why I don't know what it is about the color choices I used that look so great um, just didn't turn out so there's something funky about that color It's actually a brown that I had of my own, so you won't need to worry about that. You can also mix, you guys remember how to mix um, a neutral, right? So basically you can paint this bird with the primary colors, blue, yellow, red. You can get any color. Um, and so what you do is when you get your secondary colors, the orange, green, and purple, you look at the blue and what color is across from blue it's orange oh my goodness my brain had to work really hard at that one so blue and orange red and green um, purple and yellow those colors together will make a nice neutral color so you don't need the color brown you don't need any other color you can get every color you need by getting a a true red, a true blue, a true yellow. Um, and then you can tone up, tone down, um, darken from there. Um, so, uh, what am I doing here? Oh, that's right. So I'm just splotching in some color to add to the same styles I've done on the head. Um, anyway, so you can use those three colors. So we will, I am bringing a brown that comes in the set that we the color set that we um, purchased for the class. Uh, I think it could be I added too much water. Um, so I'll make sure that we don't let that happen this time. Um, I was just wanting not to make it too dark and I think I just added too much water. It's, it's odd because I didn't realize it till after I was done. And then I add a little black to the brown. Um, it helped a little, but sometimes anytime you add black, it, it can also dull your painting. There's something about it that just goes wah, wah, wah. So I, I recommend not adding black. And I recommend just adding the opposite color on the color wheel to get that uh, neutral color. I also realized later that I forgot to finish the tip of his beak. Oh well. <laughs> Oh, their eyes. I love their eyes. Some of them are yellow. Some of them are a bright turquoise. Some of them are so clear and transparent. They're eerie and cool at the same time. Getting the pupil a perfect circle is a little tricky. So take your time. Just use the very tip of the brush. Don't press so much. Just kind of move that paint around to get that perfect little circle little pupil and um, you'll be fine. So here I'm attempting to do some feathers. I will admit my weaknesses. 
Um, and I apologize for not trying to learn how to do that before hand. But I was so excited to do a pelican. I'm like, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. No, not really. I'm not unhappy with it. I just, um, I would have done something differently. Anyway, so you can put this wash on there. You can just wash in the direction that the feathers go. You can put a wash in there and not be so persnickety about the feathers. I, I am happy with how I blended in with the little brush right here. I do like how I blended um, the body into the head, the neck, um, just to kind of mesh those two together. Um, I wanted to show the differentiation of the color sections. Um, it looks better at the end. Uh, anyway, I mean, you can just do this. Like, the feathers like that, that's fine. A little, little bright on the purple side, but it still isn't within the same tones and hues. I, I like it a lot. I added a little bit of red, pink, especially on the top because the sun is shining there. Um, and I'm and at this point, I'm just adding to show the direction of the feathers, not so much the feathers themselves. And if we had time, one of the other things is if we had time, you can let let the painting dry and then add another layer of feathers. Let the painting dry, add another layer of feathers. And you'd have a better result than trying to paint the layers like I was, um, different colors all at once. But it kind of takes on a nice tone because I think it would be too a much higher contrast than the rest of his neck and head. And I think it would pop too much. At this point, his eye still is the focus, um, not something else, which is what I wanted. Here again, I'm doing the wash, not on the edge, and then I add the paint to the edge so you can get that definition of a clean line, subtle but clean line, um, to differentiate. There is a wing there. You guys ever watched a pelican walk? You know their wingspan's so huge and they're a heavy bird. And they walk and they waddle like a duck because I think it's because their wings are so heavy I don't know but that's what I was thinking so if my wing wasn't so wet and I just did those little feathery shapes I could have stopped there but oh no I gotta work it harder so now I'm doing the wing of the brown pelican not the drawing I've sent you um, I'll have that with me, so I will show you the direction, um, providing I don't get a fever. I'm hoping to not get a fever. Um, so this is the shape of the other photo. The photo we're working from does not have these kinds of feathers. So now look at me, I'm all like complicating the feathers and oh, see there's what we're supposed to be doing. And that's when I realized Oops, I can't go back now. So, I just gave him some funky feathers. They look more like leaves, but eh, you get the idea. I think the biggest challenge of a feather I've ever done is painting a peacock feather. That is something it's tough to do without fine detail because they're so spectacular. And now I'm just adding more contrast um, to give it more dimension, to give it more interest, to re to pop, you know, bring out, bring set back. I'm choosing all the wrong words. Um, just to give it dimension. Now these areas right here are really dark, really, really dark. So I just added more paint. I think I could have gone darker. After I painted the pink around his eye, I was like, really? Red eyes? I didn't want him to look angry or mean. They're such a cool bird. At the end of the video, I add a background. You do not need to do that. Um, I ended up adding a background. The paint was the color I wanted. 
and it faded so far out you'll see what it looked like when it was wet and when it was dry you can barely tell there's even any paint there so I would have added more but this painting took longer what I was able to do here took longer than the class time we have so I had to stop I have a little alarm that was set and I was doing the feathers when I was when I got to the wing right before the wing my alarm went off and I'm like I don't have time to fuss with these feathers so um, keep that in mind um, the less you you can paint uh, paint all the basic shapes and areas first then go back and do the fine detail and all those areas will be dry enough and you can decide what you want to bring attention to um, and what you're fine with just keeping kind of subtle um, because I think well, this is the most time consuming one we've done and I think that um, it'd be really good to finish during class. <laughs> what I can do for you guys I'll bring them home I'll flatten them I flatten everyone's paintings in between the two classes I mean in between the two weeks um, I can bring them home and flatten them and then keep them in my yearbook drawer and you guys can pick up your paintings in my yearbook drawer I don't want to put them in your file folder I feel like they're gonna get wrinkled up again so um, if you don't uh, no, I really don't want you to take them home because I love being able to scan them and share everyone's paintings with everyone. So um, I'd, I'd really appreciate that. And remember, one good reason to take some paints home is if you wanted to um, paint again something you did that you wanted to try a different way or um, try it again, by all means, you can. These videos are going to be up on YouTube for a while. Oh, that goofy silly one. I don't know how long that's going to be up there. <laughs> I love doing this technique. It just, it keeps, it, it makes it less flat, you know? I really like it. I do like the attention to detail on this guy. Especially I'm happy with his funky feathers like he just got out of the water and shook his body you know he's just got that fun hair so here's where I lay the water on and then um, typically it's very easy for me to just add some water along the edge let it trail down here trail down toward the bird um, but it streaked more than I was prepared for and um, so I fussed with it a little bit so I had the idea that it would just drip towards him, but look how it just stopped in those areas and left me a line. That's not what I wanted. And then I did that, which was really silly. And now it's stuck because our paints, one of the advantages of our paints are they are light fast. One of the disadvantages are they're more, per they are permanent. So they're not, um, what you lay down is kind of what you'll see if you're not, careful if you don't have a lot of water um, laid down first. Am I making sense? I'm not sure. I think I lost my train of thought. I'm pushing through this, you guys. And then if you just add more water, when you want the color away from the object, add more water. And right now I'm just cleaning up the extra paint. You just add more water and it'll push the paint away. And then I'm just going to sop up some of it and soften it up a little bit. And as much paint as was on there is what I wanted. And then, whoop, see, it's all faded. So anyway, enjoy. I hope you have fun. And I can't wait to see what you guys do. Thanks for this semester. It's been great.